Good morning, good morning. Are we up and running? Are we up and running? Bit of an overcast day. It was nice and blue earlier, but so no, it's the weather is going downhill and it's going to go downhill fast later on today. And it's going to go downhill for a long time. We'll be out for, oh, it looks like we've got something wrong with our frame rate on the outside camera. So just one second here. We know what we need to do about this. One moment, please. The outside camera frame rate is misbehaving, so let's kill it. Tick, 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 tick. There it comes, okay. The top-down camera frame rate looks funny too, does it? Should we do the same thing? Should we unplug that and plug it back in? One second, please. Ready, kill. Back in. How about me? Frame rate's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for the feedback. Okay. No no carving today yet. The tracing is still not finished, and, but no tracing today yet. We have another, it's not another, you saw part of this the other day. It's the fourth print in the Kyoto Journey series. I have been struggling, struggling, struggling with the color separations. Very, very, very much struggling with the color separations. And I've, I've done a couple of them. I know our carver, Kawasaki, is sitting there in Kobe waiting for work. And every day that I delay this, she just sits there with no work. So what I did was I did a couple of the colors, the ones that I clearly understand. You saw them, I think. Hey, we did them. We traced them while I was, uh, while I was on screen and sent those off to her. So she's actually, she's working now, carving away. But she'll be finished those. She'll be finished them by the weekend easily. So I've got to get the rest of them finished. I worked on it last night and I'll be doing more work on this today here on the stream. We'll be doing some uh, transferring. We'll be doing some coloring in. We'll be pasting down and we'll be perhaps even peeling or perhaps not peeling because some of this is done with thin gumpy it doesn't matter let's just get going let's just get going we've got um, every time we do one of these prints i make a guideline what blocks i think we need what colors what kind of transfer sheets are necessary i make myself a little worksheet and then get to it <coughs> and some of them you've seen how this works a lot of it's done here, waiting to be pasted down. But the one we're going to start with this morning, here we are, we're going to use this one. It's one of the transfer sheets I made the other day while you watched. I had the key block. I printed X numbers of copies of it onto our patented thin gumpy paper. This, I think, is the... Is it the five millimeter or the three millimeter? Well, it might be the five, it'll get a peel. And then what I was doing with most of those, I took my pen and drew in the red area. Now this one this morning is gonna be special and we're gonna do it a way that you haven't seen before, I think, on these streams. Because it looks like this. The color I want is what, we, what Yoshida used to call a Nezumi bomb. We called it Nezumi Ban because Nezumi is the word for mouse, but it's also the word for gray. And he would get a block, they would make a block with a gray tone here, 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 here. And the way it would work is if you've got yeah, three or four people with some kimono colors, somebody's got a red, someone's got a blue, someone's got a green. If you cut the Nezumi Ban, for example, just to do the bottom half of that person, the green person gets a two-tone piece of clothing, stuff like this. The pink person gets a two-tone piece of clothing. A roof might have half of it on the gray block. It'll give a shadow to the roof. So one block can transform a print, absolutely transform a print. And for this next design of Jed's, this is the Nezumi Bound. I can't show you the whole picture, so it doesn't matter. This is the Nezumi Bound. Shadow block, gray block, tint block, whatever you want to do. Now, I can't just 
print this out on Photoshop and paste it on the wood because as we've talked about before, the outlines, the key lines are no longer in the same place. But what am I gonna do? Here's the transfer sheet I've got. How am I gonna get that data from Photoshop onto the transfer sheet? Here's what we're gonna do. I've printed this out very, very carefully at the same scale, on the same type of paper, on the same machine, in the same weather as the transfer I originally made for the key block. And I'm going to take our double sheet of paper right now, the one that I normally would put into the Kento registration marks and glue on the block, I am going to separate it at birth from its backing sheet. I'm going to take my life in my hands because that corner is the registration corner. And I'm going to put it after I get my close up glasses. And there's no mystery here, there's no trouble here. I could put it in the corner or I can of course just look through it and see how the lines match up. And we have a match now. And now what we have is, on the top sheet here, on the thin one, we have the lines that are actually carved in reality. On the bottom sheet, the one we can now see through, we have the gray zones, the ones that we want now on this block. So Dave here, there's no other way around this, Dave here now has to trace through all these blobs that are on the design, the Photoshop sheet from the design, now have to be transferred to the reality sheet, the sheet that's real. And none of this would be necessary if we were carving robotically, if we were carving by a laser. If this sheet that I had was printed from a block carved by a laser, which came from the Photoshop data, we wouldn't have to do this. But we do. So have we got this? Take my life in my hands, whatever. Of course, it's overly dramatic. I'm sorry, what I meant, but just, it's just a way to emphasize that this is a very important part of the process. as far as getting registration goes, absolutely getting registration goes. And someone says, should have printed a key block a different color to distinguish the lines better. No, because Kawasaki-san, when she carves this color block, she needs to see exactly those lines and where they are. The important, well, both are important. She needs to know exactly the outside of those lines. And she also needs now the data that I'm going to fill in by tracing. She needs both. I could not have done this if I had printed this in a light pink or something like this or whatever. So this next part is not really going to be hugely interesting. You're just going to sit here and watch some guy, step one, draw the lines. And then after I'm finished that, I will come back and get busy with my marker. So that's it for the next... Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you tell me. It's going to be up to you to, uh, to prod some interesting conversation here. When she gets this sheet, I'm going to paste it down on a piece of wood in a few minutes and then post it off to her. 
And when she opens the package tomorrow and sees this, she's going to go like, really? <laughs> it's okay. She's actually a friendly, happy girl. It's her job. When we're a carver, this kind of job, some of the blocks we have to carve are inherently more interesting than others. And some just kind of seem a little bit blobby and not so interesting and a bit overly delicate. But it's part of the job. It's part of the job. In our collection of uh, older clips and, and video material and et cetera, et cetera, we have a clip. It's, it's a video clip now. It was originally a film clip taken in the Adachi workshop in 1953 or 54, one of the middle 1950 years. And it shows one of the Adachi craftsmen doing this job. He wasn't tracing on top of a Photoshop master. What he was doing was he was tracing on top of a, it looked like a, maybe it was a photograph or some kind of, of Xerox or something, whatever it was that they had in the 1950s. And he was doing exactly the same job as this, one of the color blocks for an Utomaro print reproduction. And the key block had been carved and a proof taken from it, and he was drawing on that proof. They're called Kyogo Zuri. But the kimono pattern didn't have any guide to the lines on the original key block. So his job was to replicate the kimono pattern, and he did exactly what I'm doing now. He did it with a brush, not a, not a, you know, a ballpoint pen. It was Funaba, Funabasha, older, older, older guy. He died before I came here. I never met him. And that was his job at Adachi, among other things, was to do these color separations. In the old days, it's the designer's work. After the key block was carved, these blank sheets, all with the key lines, would go back in a stack to the designer, or tomorrow, or whoever, and that person would draw on them, showing what they wanted. If it was the sky, they would draw the clouds, greenery here, draw the shadows. So actually, what I'm doing here really is Jed's work. You guys have your own conversations going on. Good. Thank you very much. Good, good. Keep yourself busy. <laughs> Takes a bit of pressure off me if you guys have something interesting to talk about.
It's funny to think about this. The original, the original of this, of course, comes from Jed's, uh, Jed's file. He drew the thing first and worked out a basic set of color separations and must have gone back and forth and tried this and tried that. But when he's drawing these shadows in these trees, he does it, you know, with, with some kind of brush or tool in Photoshop. But uh, he's wielding power, you know. He just takes his brush and dab, 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 done. Dab, 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 done. And yet for every one of those dabs, the knife has to go into the wood and carefully cut. So with his single quick dab, it's X time that it takes. We saw that in the hooks I print we carved last month, all those dots and dots and dots and dots and dots. And I'm going to do it again with the cat this month, all the hair. He just goes but we have to carefully and slowly carve each one. Was Talantan here this morning? On Thursday morning? Is he really here? Really? I think he might be, he might have his computer open and the thing might be running, but I think he's uh, supposed to be at school this morning. We'll see. His name shows up in the list, but it could be that Taransan at the very moment is standing in front of a crowd of unruly middle school kids in an English class. You know, his computer might be open, but, uh, so don't yell too loud. The kids might hear it. I don't, I don't know. There's also another background part to this. I guess it's okay to talk about it now. I could not have talked about it before, but now that Ayano-san has told us about this announcement, with Ayano-san and Taran-san you know, becoming a partnership like this, there is a massive, massive ramification for Taran-san and David as far as the work. When I came to Japan first in 19... when was it? We visited the 1970s and I came here in 1986 to live and we had a major, major problem. I was not able to get a visa. When I first came in, in 1986, I came in on a tourist visa. They would not give me a culture visa, they would not give me a student visa. I have no education and don't qualify for those kind of things. And Taransan, at the moment, he, his visa status, he's a, an English teacher. The only way he could get into the country is to uh, work as an English teacher. There's no visas for people to study carving. We've tried and tried and tried. It doesn't happen. So Taransan currently is an English teacher. He is an employee at a 
large major English school and works there five days a week, morning till whatever. Staggers home, spends some time carving, goes back to work the next day. But uh, if he, if he, if when, I mean, they're engaged, when they go through with this, when they get their certificate, when Tanan-san marries a Japanese citizen, it's not automatic, but he then can, the two of them can get some documentation, walk over to the immigration people, present their documentation, and his visa status will be changed. It will no longer be his business, employment by the English school. It will be a spouse visa which allows Tarhan-san to work anywhere he should so choose, including traditional crafts carving. I don't know, we haven't had a deep discussion on this because I didn't push this and talk about it because I couldn't push those two to get married, but we've all known about this in the background. It must have been a consideration for them. But we now have to see what happens you know, as this goes forward. There obviously now is an open route for Taran-san to actually leave this school, leave teaching, if this is what he wants to do, and try and find work as a carver. Try and find work as a carver. Where do you think maybe he should go to try and find some work as a traditional carver? Anybody got any ideas? And can they afford him? People are popping up conditions here. Well, Taran-san, yeah, we think about taking you on, but let's see. Can you make it worth my while? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there is another aspect of this. Seriously, Taran-san is still quite young at this. You know, he's obviously coming along very well. You know, he's he's he did the carving on the. He did the carving on the Yoshida print that is that is coming to life step by step in our in our workshop. Taransan made this, you know. So obviously the the guy has a, a skill set to offer on the table here. But from the point of view of a traditional publisher, there's still a couple of problems. Taransan still is is not all that experienced. There's lots of things he sort of doesn't know how to do. He's not so fluent at, and he also he is still honestly honestly speaking very 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 slow. So if he went to Adachi or something, they're not going to be able to offer him very much money because he's still sort of a little bit slow about this and it doesn't know a lot what to do. But for us, give me a break. Whatever. 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 Doesn't matter. All of our printers are slow. I'm slow. Everybody's slow here. We get it done and we get it done beautifully. It's sometimes quite slow. So I guess this is the, the goal we will now be moving forward to. I still have not spoken to Taran about this, but uh, you know, again, now that the uh, engagement is on the table, this is uh, presumably the next step. It could be, I'm, I might be jumping the gun here, it could be that Taran-san has a contract with the English school and he has to do the next year. Like this is now uh, June, he may have had a contract from April and maybe he is uh, liable to work there until next March. So he and I haven't had much of a discussion on this yet. I don't know. So. But anyway, lots of things now become become possible.
So your question about, about the relationship. The relationship between Tanan-san and Asuka-sensei is also going to be a major factor here. I know they have an apprenticeship deal, the two of them. I know I, I'm not privy to all the details. But the thing is, these days, to, to say I am somebody's apprentice, it really isn't working the way that it did in the old days. <clears throat> in the old days, the apprentice would have been bound and beholden to that workshop. He would have worked, 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 got paid almost nothing, been a slave, because at the end of it, you knew you were going to be a full-time craftsman in your own right. Now, the relationship those guys have now is not like that, because Asuka-san can't promise him work at the end of this, and this and that, and this and that. So it's really, we're using the word, he and Asuka-sensei are using the word apprenticeship, but it's in a very formal, non-structured way. I, I don't think they have a contract. I don't think it's going to be seven years or whatever. And Asuka-san is in no position to give Taran-san work, whereas we are. So obviously, this is the way step forward. We have to have a meeting, me and Taran-san and Asuka-sensei, and we'll just work out. Taran-san will stay there. I will not in any way become Taran-san's teacher. Not in any, 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 any way. Taran-san's guide, technically and through the craft and through all the working, will, of course, continue to be Asuka-sensei. Simply what we will probably be able to offer here is simply a paycheck. And in return, we have to get X amount of, of uh, wood blocks out of, the, out of that partnership. And of course, we're going to be able to, to, to work out how to do that. We've already been doing this. So in a sense, from Asuka Sensei's point of view, if I can uh, you know, give Taran's on work and a paycheck every month, it really takes a huge amount of pressure off him. And he can simply, he and Taran-san's relationship will simply be technical. How do we do this? How do we train? How do we learn how to do this? Without having to worry about any financial aspect. I'll take that away from them. And those two can uh, just focus on the, on the learning over however many years they want to do it. It doesn't matter. Just simply, as part of the learning process, the blocks that Taran-san creates will sort of have to be usable for us here at Mokohankan so that we can afford to pay that salary. So obviously there's a path through here, obviously. Yes, this is Kiyomi Zadera. Of course, there couldn't be anything else in Japan. It's not going to be a winter scene, no, because you can see the foliage, and we are already struggling. Jed's given us a scene. When Jed and I have been working out prints and designs and stuff like that, it's not happening so much these days, but it used to happen all the time. Jed would give me a very quick little pencil sketch. One, two, three, four different possible layouts, like a kind of a, you know, they do for storyboards. Chick, 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 chick. And I would look at those, and he and I would chat about them, and I would say, you know, let's, let's pick number one and number two here. Let's work those forward a little bit. And as part of that, the discussion, he and I would think, okay, even though, imagine the sketch had been there for this one. There'd been a, a he would have put a temple, Chris, 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 Gujinoto, people. So he would have done the sketch in two or three seconds. Then if this had been the one we had chosen, I would at that point then have said to Jed, okay, let's think about this. Is a, this is nominally a picture of Kimi Zodera, but what's this image really about? Because Dave here, in, as part of his editing function, as part of his publishing function, I very much, for each of these prints, want to have a quick answer to the question, what is this image about? If there's a bit of that, and 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 a bit of that, like lots of Jed's recent Jiglai prints, I'm not so interested. I want to see a clear concept. What is this thing about? And then, what time of day is it? I want these questions to be answered in, in prints like this. And we've got this far with this one now, and I don't think, actually, that that question got answered satisfactorily. What is this one about? I think there's three things competing for attention here, the temple structure, the pagoda structure, and the forest. And I'm not 100% sure this is going to work. What is this print about? And when it goes to the printers, they're going to they're look at this and say, Dave, well, what are we doing here? Is this about a temple with some forest around it? Or is this about a forest? What's the deal here? And I'm not quite sure if we're going to be able to answer the question satisfactorily for this one. We'll see. We're in it now. We're swimming now. We're down the river here. So we'll see. How many wood blocks will we need? Well, the game plan has 11 
11, 11 different zones, and it could be that a couple of them will, will fit on the same piece of wood. So I'm thinking five pieces of wood, both sides carved, although it may need a six. I don't know how the physical layout is going to work just yet, because a lot of these blocks cover the full surface. We can't double them up. So we're looking at at least one, two, three, four, five blocks, both sides, plus one face, or maybe five blocks, both sides. We'll see. But again, we're in the same position that we are with the Yoshida print. This one now is nominally fully carved, but the print is nowhere near ready. And as we move forward with the test printing, it could be that the current block set is fine. We just need more different creative ways to print with them. Or it could be that we will have to chop some more wood. We don't know yet. That this was, the test printing was supposed to have been done on this, the next level two weeks ago. But Ayumi-san, the printer who's assigned to this job, uh, one of her daughters has been hospitalized and she has been off for a couple of weeks. I understand that there's no uh, major problem and that Ayumi-san's coming back to work next week, but fingers are still crossed. John says, I think it's about the couple at lower left. Well, the only way now, with all this tons of detail everywhere else, the only way now to make it about those couple at the lower left would be to arrange the light so there's a spotlight on them and it's black everywhere else. I, I don't think it's going to work if it's supposed to be about those guys. Jed does this all the time. You can see this in his Jiklay work all the time. He never leaves an empty space bigger than, than Ye. If there's an empty space bigger than Ye, he puts something in it. He and I are going to have to have a talk. But we've been very consistent with this, you know. If you find the web page and go back through, say, our Japan Journey series, or go back through the Pilgrimage series, you will see, as you flip through those, if you think about this, the thing I just said, what is this print about? If you flip through them, you will see absolutely the thing I'm talking about. You will be able to answer that question instantly for any of those prints. And you can do so because it has been a major factor in the way we work. And I feel we've slipped up on this one. He and I didn't have, well, I think actually it was extreme time pressure. And we didn't really have time together to go through sketches. So Jed basically just did it without any consultation and we just, uh, just went with it. He's extremely busy, I'm extremely busy. This was happening when that police episode was going on. I guess I don't know if I brought you an update on that. We do have an update from the police department over in Utah. I don't know if it's the Utah State Police or if it's the city police in Provo, I don't know. We have an update. A suspect and her boyfriend are in custody for this particular crime. The prints have not been recovered. We have no chance to get any more back. It wasn't porch pirate. It turned out that the young lady in question and her boyfriend have been in custody before for the crime of breaking and entering into vehicles. This is their modus operandi. They break into vehicles. And it turns out that one day, some months ago, they must have broken into a UPS truck. And among the things they got were a bunch of keys. And it seems, again, I'm, I'm going on half information here based on Jed's email as reported by the detective who chatted to him. It seems that they realized that they had a Dropbox key and they, maybe they played it smart. They went to the Dropbox, opened it 2 o'clock in the morning, and took some stuff out, closed it, and left it. They didn't clean it out, then go back the next day and clean it out. Because what would have happened, UPS would have quickly changed the key. So it seems that they did this in an insidious way. We, we don't really know, just the fact that it went on for a long time, this seems to be the only way possible. They took their key at three o'clock in the morning, opened it, took one or two or three things, or one thing or whatever. And they did this over a time period, a time period. 
and they got two of our packages. So the first time they got our package must have been random. And then the second time they got the one, two or three weeks later, they must have looked inside the Dropbox. Oh, there's another one of those with the prints. I can get it. So our second package, which had way, way, way more prints, was stolen the same way from the UPS Dropbox. So we lost two packages of prints. The police have told us there is no recovery plan. Sorry, write off your losses. We're done. Prosecution is moving ahead. That's nothing to do with us. They may not even report to us what's going to happen. It's none of our business. So we're out. I forget the total. What is it? 140 prints. They're all gone. And we'll simply now make our bookkeeping entry, write them off, and it's history for us. And I asked Jed, I put an idea on play with Jed that he tells me all the serial numbers, the print numbers that are involved here, because he does number these things. They're not limited editions, but we number all the prints just going up. There was Rick Shuckhart, number one, number two, number three, and now 1,274, 1,275. And Jed knows which numbers were in that box. So I'm thinking that what we should do is on his website and my website, just publish a page talking about this theft and just listing the numbers. By the way, if you see a rickshaw cart numbered between X and Y, just to let you know, this is stolen merchandise. We ourselves have no way to recover this. And, and uh, if we see one of these prints, I think some of the people in the chat have some. I think some people here actually bought some. We're not going to ask you to whatever. You've, you've put your money out. There's no, you know, I can't pay you to send me those prints because we're already out. I don't need them back. You bought them uh, on the market. Nothing to do with me. But somebody sees it on eBay, all we're trying to do is if somebody sees it on eBay, not to buy it. But if you've already bought it on eBay and you've got it, whatever, it's okay. I'm not upset at you. You didn't know it was hot merchandise. I'm not asking you to send it back. That's your loss. Why should you lose? So, no, no problem. Just, we just want to sort of expose the information so people know that there are hot prints out there. Or maybe I shouldn't do this. Feedback, feedback, feedback. And same thing, maybe, I, I don't see, I don't think that same person has them anymore. They've obviously gone somewhere else. The police are not interested in this at all. Not at all. And even then, all that would do, maybe it would force the person to just erase them. And then you would have damaged prints with an erasure mark. I don't know. Okay, I think we have come to the end of the first stage here. I think I have now traced all the gray lines here. And if I now went ahead and pasted this down straight away, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't be enough. And let me give you a simulation. Let me pull this off the backing sheet here just for a second. Because if we paste this down now, remember, what gets pasted down is just the gumpy. So all she would have is this. Look at this, once I've lifted it off. Let me put, it, put a piece of white paper underneath here. There we go. This is what's going to get pasted down on the wood. And that's, of course, that's chaos. She would not have any idea what to do. So next step is I need to take my markers now and color in where are they? Just so I can get an area right here. If I make a mistake here, color in. This area, for example, is going to become red. But I have another problem in that this is full of tiny areas and the marker I have on my desk right now is a big fat wide marker. So I am going to postpone this job for a couple of hours. I'm going to head out to the stationery store and I'm going to get a super fine tip red marker for doing this job. If I don't, she will hate me for the rest of the day. So let's move on to a different part of this job. Immediately to the right of the couple at bottom left. Yes, I've got you. Thank you, whoever this is. Pass some eggs around. Let's go here. This line. Who was that? Was that Johnson? Thank you, Johnson. Right. This line right here. I will also, too, when it comes time to start the coloring job, then I will very quickly discover what I've missed. So here's another one. I can see another one there, right there. See it? So 
So let's not panic about this. I will discover those. Use a knife to trim the marker tip. You know, I don't know if I can do that. It's got plastic on both sides. No, I'm going to go with, the, I'm going to do it. There is, there are, in the stationery store, there are full grades of markers going right down to little fine ones. I will simply go out and buy one and do it here. So let's move on to a different part of the process because I have more than one color block here. So waiting to be pasted down will be this one later. We have this one. This one. You see, I did the same thing yesterday, last night. And I did another one last night. You can see I got, I got a bit chaotic because this is where I realized that the marker here is way too big. So how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two have gone to Kawasaki-san already, eight and nine, and two of them are already carved. The key block and the partial key block, ten and eleven. So I've got to get these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They now have to get pasted down on the wood. I've got to use the back side of these blocks. I'll save that. And I've got some more wood waiting here. Let's see. Let's pick some nice smooth faces. I need to be really careful about the one for the sky because I don't want wood grain in the sky. with any of them. Let's just get started. Can I see the wood grain in the print? For the most part, we don't want to see grain in the prints. This is within our interpretation of the Japanese print tradition. Modern Japanese printmakers, or modern printmakers anywhere actually, when making woodblock prints, quite frequently want to see grain in the prints. And there are ways to bring up the grain, there are ways to emphasize grain. We, for the most part, don't want to see the grain in the sky or something, for example. We don't want to see it. It's, it's, it's there sometimes, we can't always erase it. We are using wood. But in a print like this, where there's so much going on already, my God, the print is chaotic, full of information, full of detail. The last thing we want is wood grain. And if the sky block had wood grain that was vertical like this, it would just destroy it. So no, 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 no. We don't want wood grain in our corner of the woodblock printmaking world. Then why use wood? Well, it's a long story.
Now oh, the other day when we pasted down some of these we got some magnificent peels. Today we're going to paste down two or three. Hold your breath because not all of these sheets today are on the full thick gumpy. Some of them, this one I'm going to do right now is on the antique gumpy that we have in our shop. This is not going to peel so you're warned right now. I'm going to paste this down and walk away. So leave your scorecards in your briefcases. These are all on different gumpies, so just, just case by case. Some will peel, some won't. Okay, check, check. Registration marks cut. Area of interest here. Also, too, with a design like this, this is going to be a block to print one of the greenery shadows. If it turned, there would, turned out that there was a slight defect in the wood, and we have some little marks here, where maybe the wood was too hard and didn't pick up a bit of pigment, it's not going to matter at all. In the middle of this chaos, a little dot or a dirt or a bit of cheaty, this print is not going to be at all, at all a problem for cheaty. Someone's asking me, dull chisel. It is, and you know why. If you watched the stream the other day, you'll know why. Oh my God. Dave here, lazy Dave, is using this tool for two purposes. I'm using it to cut the registration marks where it needs to be sharp enough to draw blood. And you saw me the other day, I, I dulled it and used it to take those prints off the packaging. And there's another batch waiting for me today. What an idiot, my God. I'm still like living out of a suitcase. This is not my home. It's not my workshop. I don't have my regular tools here. How many years? We've only been here since 2017. And I'm living out of a suitcase, both personally and, and professionally. <sighs> my drawers at home, my sharpening system, everything, it's all sitting back in on me. I don't know. This guy needs his head examined, so. Oh, 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 something else, something else, something else, too. Yes, 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 it's Thursday today. In Japan, it's Thursday. It's still Wednesday in Great Britain, the home of the British Museum and the home of the British Museum's YouTube channel. I got a note from them last week that they are uploading a new video to their Creators Corner on their YouTube channel. And they said last week, they said next Thursday, which would have meant Great Britain time next Thursday, which means like any minute now, I think, in Britain, actually. I don't know the schedule. I don't know the time and place. I haven't heard back from them since then. I presume I'm going to get an email from them maybe, you know, when, when working time starts in Britain. So eight, ten hours from now, I'll probably get an email from them saying it's up. Put it on your calendar or check right now. Go to the British Museum's YouTube website. Look for the latest print in the curator's corner. And coming soon is a video that they took over here when the, the team was over here uh, a few months ago. So, as we said, no peel. I can't, this is extremely thin gumpy. If I try to peel this now, I am just going to destroy it. So, no touch. It'll go to our carver, Kawasaki-san. And as a way to help her figure out what on earth to do, I'm going to include for her I don't have it yet for this one, but I'm going to include for her something like this, a color printout 
from the Photoshop file, which will let her refer back and forth. As she's carving, she can look back and forth. This is not the same image, but you get the idea. Let's move on. What time is it? 8.51. We're doing fine. Some of the carvers don't like peels anyway. Yes, peeling is not a normal part of this process. The way I do it is not the normal way. If you peel it off, then as you're carving, your hand is rubbing over all the rest of it and sometimes getting it fuzzy. Taransan never peels. He will tur turn an area, he will rub off an area, carve it, and his hand will thus be rubbing on protected paper. So this peel is, is not a thing. The other thing about the video that is going up on the British Museum's website today is I, I guess I got my wires crossed. I misunderstood what they were doing. They came here a couple of months ago and the research researcher, what's she called? She's a research scientist. I don't know her, I forget her title, cappuccino san. She sat next to me and we looked at each other and we started to have a conversation about this and that and this and that and this and that and this and that. And she asked questions, I answered and sometimes they told me, please, when you're answering, look at the camera which I did instead of looking at the her for a conversation. But I had assumed that the video that was upcoming for the British Museum was a video of the two of us digging into some really cool parts about this carving. I had misunderstood. It turns out there's more than one video in preparation. One video coming later is the conversation with her about some of these neat topics and neat points about the idea of carving an old sketch. What they were also planning, which I totally didn't get, and maybe, honestly speaking, maybe they didn't tell me, maybe this came up later in their editing room, what they have made is a video for their curator's corner. And it opens with me facing the camera, talking, and that's all we see. It's like a, one of my own David's Choice YouTube videos. <laughs> and there's B-roll, they cut in and show carving and stuff going on while I talk to camera. None of it with a teleprompter. I was just, they just, they poked me and I, I, I responded. And I watched it the other day. And it, it even opens like this. It says, what does it say? It says Curator's Corner, David Block. <laughs> like I'm an honorary member of the British Museum curation team this week or something. Whatever. <laughs> Great fun, but the downside, I watched it, hit the stop button, and then went straight to Ayano-san's desk. And I said, Ayano-san, we have a problem coming next week. She's, what, 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 what? I show her the video, and she's like, yeah, we have a problem. Because 10 billion people are gonna want those prints. After seeing this video, everybody, I gotta warn you right now, don't watch it. Don't watch it. Because at the end of the video, you're gonna try and find the subscribe button. Not to the video, you're gonna try and find the subscribe button to the prints. And we have to decide, and I guess actually we've been talking about it this week, we have to decide today, me and Ayano-san, what to do. Do we close the series and just push against the wall, and then the same thing, waiting list of X thousands of people? Or do we open it and say, allow another 200 people to join and turn around and call Kubota-san? Oh, Ayano-san, we were just talking about you. I mentioned your name just now. I said, today, Ayano-san and I have to make a big decision. Big decision? No, you're already getting married. I don't mean that decision. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean no, 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 uh, Thursday in... Yeah, Thursday, Thursday, British time. So, 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 probably later this afternoon from our time. Anyway, we, we have to talk about this today. What are we going to do about subscriptions? Yeah. So, we have Kawhi. to decide what to do. Kawhi, well, she's Kawhi. just like, there's Kawhi. this flood of, flood of, flood of business coming in. Anyway, later, right now, it's all about... I am sorry. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing special happened to yesterday. So we she can't top last week's news. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, nothing special. Listen. 
Like we we spent like how many hours together in the in Mokohanka? So like I think you know. Oh, I know her news. More. Yeah, I know her news. Of course, of course, of course, of course. So so Nothing so. Nothing really special. No, no, no. Okay, but I get asked then. How is your life? How is your sort of your life hasn't changed right now, but the mood must be different. You know, you guys are going to get married, so there must be a difference in your life and stuff. I don't think anything has changed since then. I, I don't know. I'm well. I'm still happy with the ring. You know, like and I'm excited. Oh, we didn't. Do you want to explain that? Because we didn't even mention that. I didn't even ah, know. So oh, oh, I screwed up badly. Actually, I didn't know something that was happening in the background here. <clears throat> we now turn you over to. I understand wow. for the next. No, no, really, really. No, no, show, no, tell. No, it's no, a good story. Tell me the show. The thing. Show, 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 show. Here, here's your camera. Where's your hand? No, please, I'm Sunday. I think I should take it off. No, no, just put your hand here. You or you can see you, it better. Okay, so your call. There is. Stuck. My finger. It's stuck. <laughs> That's it. Just put your just put just put your hand down here. Then whatever. There is a ring, and the ring has a backstory. But as far as I know, Taran san made it, the show? Yes, I asked him to make a wooden ring because he's a carver. And I thought it would be much easier than I ex I mean, I, yeah, I thought it would be easier. Can we, can, I can reach you over your head here. I'm sorry. If, if I, if we, can we zoom in a bit here? Okay, you can see the screen. So there's your spot somewhere around here. Uh, not, not your watch. <laughs> there you go. Hi. Okay, okay. Yeah, but can you, can to, you, oh. So it's, it's a wooden ring, the show? So this, ne? What did he do? He made a ring. He carved a wooden ring and then sent it to a jeweler for, for the stone part, or did he do that? Uh, I'm not quite sure, but apparently he bought a, a gold ring first. No, no, first, maybe, I don't know, bought the ring first, and then he measured the ring size, and then he carved the wood. And, so, uh, is it a blend? It's a wooden ring or it's a gold ring? Well, I don't understand. So gold inside and the wooden ring outside. So, the gold inside, well, you can't see it. I can't see it, but I can see from the side. Okay, but so I, wood wouldn't have been strong enough by itself. I don't think so, because he has to make it thin. Mm, and mm, if it's like mm, too mm, thick, mm, then mm, it, mm. Look, uh, it will look weird on my, on my finger. Interesting, okay. interesting. So, yeah, and then he attached the, the diamond. He did it himself, or that went to a specialist, a jeweler? Uh, you know, to attach the diamond, di touching diamond itself on the ring is quite difficult. Mm. So he needed specialist to have this... Work, uh, of course. And you know what this is called? Uh, there is a name, I forget what it is. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, yeah something yeah, yeah, to yeah. hold yep, the, the yep, jewel. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so he couldn't find one, or he couldn't make one because it, he needs mm, a special mm, tools mm, to mm, make mm, this, mm, you know, mm, thing. Mm, mm. So he bought uh, diamond uh, earrings. And he uh, repurposed the parts. So, 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 Interesting. Okay, okay. So this right. is strong. You're, you trust this? this. It's going to yeah, be yeah. strong. Okay, okay, okay. And he put coating uh, uh, on the wooden. Okay. Wood. Okay, but one, by some, one thing I don't understand myself, I'm not part of this culture. I never did this myself. I've never been involved with engagement rings or wedding rings. My ex wife and I didn't do that sort of thing. This is an engagement ring, is it? Engagement ring. So you wear this until the point where you get married, and I then so. how then does this work? Does it become a wedding ring then, or what? No, um, couples usually usually buy um, uh, Another, wedding rings. Okay, and this so. will be taken away and stored, or or will be stored, or maybe I will wear it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's really only just a short, you know. So this ne, but uh, I really like it, so mm. I might wear mm -hmm. it you okay, know, so until so. I. Mm. Somebody's asked Kirsty about this, Anna, about the proposal. The was it was it a surprise? I mean, you guys have been living together for a year, so I don't know how much of this was a surprise or how much you want to talk about. I mean, please, you know, don't don't talk about something uh, you think is private. People ask, was the proposal a surprise for you, or it was sort of surprise, sort of no, because I I I, I myself is the one who asked him to make a wooden ring, so I knew he was making the ring. Okay, so this was being cooked up. You you were kind of figuring you were going to be partners. Then. Right, okay, right, okay, and okay. I thought he will propose me uh, when we go hiking uh, in July. We we're going to climb this uh, mountain called uh, Shirouma uh, in Nagano, which is one of the biggest mountains in Japan. So I thought, oh, he will be, he will propose me when we at the top of a mountain, uh, right? so, 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 the top of a crowded mountain so, in so, Japan. So, 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 so that's okay. romantic, this year, right? <laughs> okay. And I, I was right. I was right. He was going to. He was supposed to. He was thinking to propose me on top of a mountain, uh -huh. but because I said it out loud, Tara, top of who? Ah, she gave it away, <laughs> spoiling it, so he had to think of plan B. So <laughs> Nanda. Nanda. So we went hiking last weekend. Uh, we went to Oze in uh, Guma. Oh, really, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I don't know. 
Yeah, marshy. it's this place. Yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm national park. This very, very famous area of Japan. It's it's a marshy area called Oze. Oze, Oze Gahara? Oze. Oze, Oze Gahara. Oze Oze Gahara. Oze. It's really beautiful. Mm. About, mm. We went to Before the mosquitoes come. Before the mosquitoes <laughs> so. come. But after the typhoon this time. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, it was okay. I though. see. So he hit you there. Right. He wasn't still sure when he left the house that morning, uh, but he carried the ring around just in mm. case. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we were actually going to miss, like we were about to miss the last bus to get back home, mm. to get back to the mm. uh, parking lot actually. Mm. So we were rushing, rushing, rushing. Nobody is around us. We're rushing, running, and then he stopped, and then he stood up on the top of like a big rock, and I, yeah, he asked me to come on the, you know, come up on the rock as well. I was like, no, we don't have time. We gotta go. We gotta go. <laughs> so we're we were in rush. But we stopped. Okay. We stood okay. on the big rock, and he proposed. The way the story should have gone, of course, they should have fallen off, broken both their arms, and made it something they could really tell their grandchildren about. Oh, you should remember when he proposed to me. So we so all so broke so our so legs, you know. So, <laughs> so he doesn't think that it was like you know it was romantic enough, but uh, oh, it's, it's gonna well, be no, good. somebody's got to comment here. Because the bus is waiting, you got no time, so you had no choice. You had to say, oh yeah, yeah, sure, whatever, whatever, let's go. <laughs> Well, I, well, after he said that, I didn't even say yes or no. I was like, hey, hey, come on, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go. <laughs> you said, guys are crazy, you guys are crazy. Well, that was, oh my God, I, you that know. was yeah. and it's gonna be a good memory this year. Uh, okay, it could have been a worse memory, but <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> Last bus, then it will be. Uh, yeah, that would be the one. Then you got to stay overnight up on top of that rock. <laughs> then you got a story about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. The things kids do these days, you know? So. So, so, so. So, so, so. So, so, so. It's know. funny talking to people like this, hearing these stories, you know, I understand you're not one third my age, but you're nowhere near half my age, you know, you're somewhere in between. <laughs> Just, these, these, these people, Anusan, Taransan, they're way, way, way younger than my kids, you know. Yeah, my kids are 40. Soka, soka, you're not, soka. you're still a two. The show, she still starts with, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, she starts with two, my kids are four, 40, so. Yeah. so. So, God. so you're between my kids and my grandchildren, and you're closer to the grandchildren. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. so. so grandpa hearing uh, his grandson, uh, no, so, granddaughter's so, story. So. <laughs> anyway, me too, off my congratulations. Thank and, you very uh, much. As we, uh, we still have no date for this, when this is all happening or nothing? No, I don't think so. Okay. I will let you know. I right. will let everyone know. Okay. In the meantime, I mean, soon, soon as we finish this stream, i got to come upstairs and we have to make some numbers on the hoax eye series because okay. that video is coming i guess today Hi. And, uh, if you know what time you're uploading i know nothing i know nothing in fact i'm i'm obviously right now britain is going to bed so they haven't done it yet it's still wednesday night there so the people must be coming to the office in the morning in britain eight o'clock so we're the late afternoon for us sup, 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 sup. and then i guess the next they will probably me. drop me an email and say hey we're uploading it in a few minutes or we've already uploaded it so it's happening for us Tonight, I guess, Britain oh. Thursday morning, as far as I so know. When so. I open the incoming box next morning. Well, we have to work about today what to do this. And what, what I'm guessing right now is that we will leave subscriptions open, but that we have got to put a note on there today. And a welcome if you're coming from seeing the British Museum video, YouTube video. Thank you very much. We can accept your subscription. Please understand we cannot make the initial shipment until. I'm just flying here, August 1st, or something like this. And you and I today have to figure out this schedule with the printers. So people see the order page and they see, we'd love to have you, but we can't start till August 1st. Something like this. Hmm. Let's try and work it out. Okay, We'll see. Okay, All right. Okay, good thanks, I'll see you soon. Thank you, you very much. So, 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 good, good, good. I have no idea, like I said, she, she was still, they're going to do, they obviously have to do a civil ceremony, you know, you know, the paperwork at City Hall, but what kind of other ceremony they're planning, it's um, obviously still up in the air, nothing to do with me, I don't know about this, I presume I'll be invited, whether or not streaming will be invited, I have no idea, I wouldn't bring up such a thing at all, she knows our environment here, it will be as open or as private as those two people choose, and I will just go with the flow.
I guess these days when people get married, they take some video. Maybe they could show the video after the stream or something one day. I don't know. We'll just leave the option open. She knows about the community here, but I will in no way try and uh, push them into doing this thing in public at all. It'll be their call. Their call. Someone's putting up the British Museum video. No video yet. Okay. Yeah, now it's 9.06. I've got a couple of things here. I do have a short video clip uh, from Sugasan printing yesterday. But I tell you what, let's do this. Let, let me go ahead now. Let me paste this down and pull one more off. That'll bring us to about 9.15. We have a, the, the continuation of the show and tell. Let me, let me just get to work here. Let me just get to work here. I do have a video clip that I want to show you from Sugasan upstairs. And it is really, really interesting in a way that we have not shown before in any of her videos. She's doing the Scent of Chrysanthemums print, which is hontoni, it is stunningly, staggeringly difficult. And she's doing it in a way that will do all the difficult parts first. So that if she screws something up, she hasn't printed all nine kimono colors, which were relatively easy then to screw up the nose. So she's done the face and the head and hair and jewelry part. She's done those first and they are now behind her and they have come through very well. So it's pretty clear now her success rate on that print is going to be very high. We're going to get a bunch, a bunch high. Dave has the big money envelope ready for the wedding payment. Double the show, double this time. I'll have to get advice from my staff on how much I should be paying. I'll have to get advice from my staff, Ayano-san. <laughs> and she'll say, recuse. <laughs> we'll do what we have to do. It's okay, and uh, not even as an obligation. I'm happily, we'll do what we have to do, of course. When a staff member has a date like this, of course the boss chips in. Any, any company is the same. If she worked for Toyota, her, her manager would, would chip in. It's the way it's done here. Yeah, the envelope, everybody saw, you know, it's a big, big deal. It's all, it's all a structured, formalized, ritualized, which is a good thing. You know, when I first came to Japan and heard about that kind of stuff, these special envelopes for this or special envelopes for that and all that kind of stuff, my immediate impression on those things as a, a typical dorky, typical egalitarian Canadian was that, why do we have such stupid rules for all these? Why do I have to follow such silly rules that a certain size envelope with a certain color string and all that kind of stuff? It's silly. It's silly, I said. Now, after 40 years living here, I am so, 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 so happy those rules are in place. And now I fully, fully understand how and why they are there. Remove stress. Remove any question of what you're supposed to do. Just follow the rules. You're happy. They're happy. He's happy. She's happy. We all knew what was expected. We all knew what to do. It minimizes stress, minimizes trouble, minimizes mistakes. It just makes it all flow so super smoothly and easily. I myself don't know all the rules, but I know where to find the information. If I went to say Isetan department store, whatever, and talk to the ladies in the gift department there about what kind of gift I need to prepare, they will ask me a few questions and based on the information they learn, they will tell me exactly what to do. And everybody will be happy. It works. I didn't get it when I first came here. Why do I need to follow the rules? But it works, it works, it works, it works. Okay, there we go. As again, no, no peel. Simply the backing sheet came off. And as you can see, we don't need to peel this. The carver Kawasaki-san can see absolutely everything. She may, while she's carving this, she may take her finger and peel off a little bit at a time as she's going through. That's her choice.
Okay, that's done. Okay, next step here. I have a small video clip for you. It was taken upstairs yesterday, uh, yesterday morning in the printing workshop upstairs with our printer Sugasan. And it's a little different from the previous clips. I showed you a couple of clips the other day. She put pigment on, rubbed, pulled the paper, blah, blah, away she went. That was the intent when I took this video yesterday. She's doing a very small amount of area on the block. It's a very little small, I think it's a little brownish area. And the whole process, putting paste pigment on, rubbing it out, because the area is so small, it's all done in a couple of seconds. Pulls the paper out, rub, bang, bang, couple of seconds, over goes the paper. So I thought, oh, just I'm not sure if I got, I'll let the camera run. So she did it again, I let the camera run, and I thought, Oh, this is a good chance for me to show something of a printer's rhythm. I'm going to start the video and I will shut up and we're going to see her print the same impression non-stop five times. Get your watch ready with a second hand and see if you can figure out during this how long it takes her to do the color on each sheet of paper. We're going to see five times through one particular color. Let me know in the chat whether you can hear the audio from the thing properly or not and I will for the most part I think basically just keep quiet. Let's roll. Sorry about the truck background noise, whatever. In the real video, when we publish it in a couple of weeks, there won't be this truck background noise. There will just be the sounds of the room she was working in. About 30 seconds each time, right? I think she did it five times, and it was a two-minute, 30-second little clip. Someone was asking in the chat here, was this a simulation? But if not, this is just her job. I just watched her job. And it was some interesting, interesting stuff, right? If we, can I pop it up just to look at it for a second again, just a moment. We pause it here, if I can make me shrink it a bit so we can look at it. The block there, how many printing areas on the block? I see one, two, three, four, five, six 
one way, and then the whole block turns upside down, and there's a seventh one for the white for her face on the back side. It's difficult to get good wood, and when you get a good piece of wood, yeah, whatever, we use it and hang on to it. So when I made this print back in whenever it was, 2004, you know, they don't always work like this, but I managed to get seven colors on one face. Now, she's doing just one here right now. It's sometimes possible if you're good, you get two colors ready, you get two brushes, two colors, two bowls, two everything. She brushed the brown there. She could have maybe also grabbed another brush, brushed the yellow beside it, pulled the paper out and printed the brown and yellow side by side. It's certainly possible and a top gun, give me a, you know, whatever, go, go, go person would do that. She herself is really, really nervous about the registration on this print, about stretching the paper, about getting everything absolutely perfect. So she was just happy to say, I'm just going to do one color at a time. It's also <clears throat> excuse me, a bit of a break for her. She did the previous color was part of the gradation for the hair. And believe me, that wasn't 30 seconds a piece. That was three minutes per sheet. You'll see this also in the video when it comes up later on. So for her, an impression like this, which all in all, she's doing 50 sheets, 30 seconds per sheet, so it's all over in 20 minutes or so. So for her, this is a peaceful chance to relax as opposed to the stress of doing the more difficult one. And if she tries to double it up, fine, she can cut her 20 minutes down to, to 10 minutes or whatever, or, or do two colors in 20 minutes. But then it's go, 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 careful, 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 careful. So you need both of these. You need some blocks you can, <coughs> excuse me, you need these blocks you can relax on, and you need the blocks you can, you can uh, go for. Someone's asking, have we seen this on old blocks? I don't know if this is a world record seven on one block. I don't know. We do it all the time. Anybody does it all the time. Whenever we get old blocks, you see it stacked up. Of course, any, any, any carver obviously will do this as a matter of common sense. The normal rule for a big, rich printing area is you leave three fingers around the edge of it because as you're rubbing your brush, you don't want to bang into the next. For these, she's using very small, tiny brushes. And you can see that yellow one in the middle there. There's no way there's three fingers on either side of this. So it doesn't matter. She's just really careful with the brushing. It's case by case. There's rules and there's exceptions to the rules. But that was a good fun one. I'm glad I let the camera run there. We can easily show a two and a half minute clip inside the longer video. And the plan is this. Once the video is complete, um, once the printing is complete, today's Thursday, she plans on wrapping it up by next Wednesday or next Thursday. She's got seven or eight impressions left. She's not coming every day. She can't because of tax rules. She's planning on finishing next Thursday. So the plan is I'll make a rough cut of the video over that next weekend. And then she and I will then sit together with a camera on us or a couple of cameras on us. And she and I will watch the video and we'll with our pause button in hand, we will add our own commentary on it in Japanese. I then go back to the video editing and I will incorporate some of that commentary as audio or some as subtitles. We'll see how it goes at the time. So the video, this is Thursday the 8th. She'll be finished printing around the 15th. We then have to do the, the, you know, the interview. So the video, the very earliest it could possibly be ready will be the 20th of this month, but don't, don't circle the date on your calendar. It'll be somewhere shortly after that. We'll see. Okay, it's 9.19. We've run a little bit into our show and tell time. What did I have? I had simply the continuation of, where are we? Tell you what, tell you what, tell you what, tell you what, tell you what. Rather than me pull out the Surimono album book again. Let's just leave that. It's already 9.20. We've only got a few minutes. Let's skip back to that older book that I showed you in the last show and tell. And let's just take some time, a bit of smaller time, and go through some of the prints in this folder. We did see this on show and tell, but my God, it was 10,000 years ago. Maybe most of you haven't seen it before. Someone's asking the classic question, why not print it via printer? If it were simply about the image, yes, modern technology is the way to go. My 
craft here, my profession, the act of carving and printing onto Japanese paper in the old way. We were destroyed by technology well over a hundred years ago. I'm not worried about the robots. It happened to us 150 years ago. We were killed by technology. It turns out there is an aspect of, of, of beauty and of touch and of feeling and of mood in the products we make our traditional way that simply can't be replicated by modern printing methods. Modern printing methods are fast, smooth, clean, gloriously delicate, can print an infinite number of colors, but they are, and they are very, very good at communicating the information. If you want to see what Bango sunflowers looks like, you can print it out of an inkjet printer and there you've got it. If you want to catch the mood and feeling and taste of Van Gogh putting his oil on the canvas, you know what you have to do. You have to go and see the real thing. Some, asp some aspects of it can be simulated on a screen. We ourselves have a collection online that is drop-dead beautiful, glorious views of woodblock prints. But they are still a digital simulation. What we don't do here, we don't do the, oh, we want to see the mistakes because it was handmade. We don't do that. We still want a gloriously, attractively, perfectly made object. Whatever, it's a long, long story. We've got different videos about it. If you're asking a questionnaire as a beginner, the only real answer is hang around for a while, watch some carving, watch some printing, chat with other people, see some prints, and maybe you too will come to understand the attraction of this on why we do this. I'm sorry, it's a difficult, difficult question to answer, but it's also an easy, easy, easy question to answer. Okay, let's just flip through this. What it is, for those of you who weren't here the other day, this is a collection of folded pages, and they would have been given to subscribers of a newspaper. And it turns out that it was a, a sort of entertainment slash comedy, not comedy newspaper, whatever, an entertainment at all. Newspaper. It's a Koke, Osaka Koke Shimbun. I've forgotten the name already. And these sheets were given to subscribers and they're dated every two weeks apart, two weeks apart, two weeks apart. So somebody would have come to the door, knocking on the door, taken the subscription fee for the newspaper and given out one of these woodblock prints. And these are, as we said, they're all carved by hand on cherry wood. But the printing that you see, this is printed in a printing press with oil based ink. And the way we know for sure that they were actually carved by hand and not simply photographically reproduced, we can see it on every page. There's places, for example, like this. There's a couple of the horse's mane hairs are chipped out. Now, if this had come from somebody drawing a mane and then photographically reproducing it on a metal plate, there would be no such chip outs. But the fact that it was carved by hand tells me that these are going to chip out. There's another one missing here in his beard. His beard hairs, the, the chin between two of the beard hairs, is, it's popped out and missing. There's clues all over the place. Here's another one. There's an actual chip here. Here's another one. These are all artifacts of the carver's knife, which show us that this did actually go onto a piece of wood. But they're not printed by hand with a baron. And this is not a Hoxai horse at all. Absolutely not. And what these are, these are not direct reproductions of the older prints. They've made, somebody has taken a sketch and a drawing of older prints. And the idea here with this book is that they show the style of each of the artists, not the actual print itself. I can see why this person would have collected these, and in fact, maybe most of the people who received these would have, at the time, collected them, thrown them on a, in a file or whatever they did. And just over the years, most of them would have been destroyed or tossed out. We mentioned, too, also the Yomiuri newspaper here in Japan still does this. They have a rotating thing. If you subscribe to the Yomiuri newspaper, and if you're not paying by automatic bank transfer, the guy still comes to your door once a month to collect the money, he drops off with you a modern reproduction, uh, a 
printed, uh, offset printed reproduction of a Japanese woodbot print. What's the game they're playing? Nay, it's courtesans in the Yoshiwara playing a game during the afternoon, in the hot afternoon, and they've got some kind of tray. It seems to have water. There is, it seems, a courtesan, or uh, there's a female figure standing in it, and a guy in a little boat, and we have ripples. Is this, is it a game? Is it a thing? Or maybe I'm saying water, maybe it's sand. Is it a sand tray, a bonke? Tray scenery, bonke. Or are we looking at water? I don't know. Is it a game? Is it something that they have made just for fun to pass the time in the afternoon? I have absolutely no idea. We have different kinds of people here. Going by the hairstyles, the main lady here is one of the uh, one of the ladies of the night who works in this place and these two younger girls would be I think her assistants and this is their room in a hot summer afternoon passing the time it's a guy in a little boat in the water I think he's got a little punt of some kind it just goes on and on and on, the pleasure of these things. You know, I know very little about what's actually being depicted in the prints. Dave's interest in these is the technology, how they are made, what's going on. This is purportedly designed by Isoda Koryusai. You can see again, the, the little telltale signs of the thing being carved. You can see, see the little pop? The little pop there. They've tried to show her neck through the transparency of the hair and from the bottom, one, two, three, between hairs number three and four, it's popped out. There's no reason for him to go back and try and repair this, but it does show the touch of the knife. The guy who sold this book to me was adamant. These are not woodblock. This is not woodblock. And absolutely they are carved on pieces of wood and printed in a press. That's so good at it. <laughs> Hello. We're still live. Every page, you know, this is so, if I, if I were v venal about this, I could take this little book, which I think I paid 200 yen for or something, 200 or 300 yen for, cut the strings here, pop, pop, just cut the string and throw these prints in our shop. Authentic Meiji era woodbutt prints. We could sell these for, you tell me, people trust us. So we could do whatever we want because people trust us so well. I could, this is an authentic print from 120 years ago. So I could put this in a little file folder, put it in the shop, 120 year old Meiji era hand carved print, uh, 7,000 yen, and people would buy them. And the, this, there's a book of a freaking hundred of these. I could turn this book into 100 times 7,000 yen. That's uh, seven with five zeros. I could turn this book into $5,000. <laughs> Just <laughs> No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. People trust us. And if I destroy that trust, we've lost everything. But when I'm gone, my God, once I'm gone, what are they going to do here? <laughs> what a scene, eh? Little, they've made a little bedroom inside the place and the, the lady and her guest are here and the assistant is making tea. The scenes of a life long gone. Okay, 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 okay. Someone's saying, I would destroy history. These books were a dime a dozen. That's the thing, they're a dime a dozen. This actually, the copy I've got is missing pages, it's broken up, it's bashed around. If I looked around in the, in the auction sales, I could probably find a nice copy, clean, take it into our collection, and this one could be disposed. It wouldn't actually be destroying history. 
but just just no thank you no thank you no thank you no thank you Nanda, nanda, nanda. Okay, anyway, it's enough. It's Thursday. Enough. Last reminder, please watch the website, of the, the YouTube website of the British Museum. All I know is that they told me last week it would be coming up Thursday next week, which is any minute now. So watch the YouTube stream there. We'll talk about it on Saturday, whichever way it has come and gone. I'll be here two more days from now. And again, it's the same story. I might be doing the final touch-up tracing on the cats, or finally, maybe, 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 I will have a knife put to wood. If I can get this damn job off my desk today, I will have a chance to do some tracing on Friday, and maybe we'll be seeing some carving from Saturday. We'll see. Thank you very much, gang. It's, I've had fun today, even though it's been a bit of a mixed bag vis-a-vis -vis the work. Sunshine is back for a few minutes, but it's gonna be raining tonight. For sure. Okay, thanks again, guys, and see you later. For me, it's now coffee time. <laughs> What's the giggle for to go, son? Am I not allowed a cup of coffee in the morning? How many cups have you had today already so far? Okay, tea then. Is that your drink? This morning? Yeah. Two? She's had two cups of tea already, and it's only 9 30. See, that's your poison. <laughs> Uh, that's not true. On the way back from the pool this morning, I did, you can see here, I stopped at Lawson and I did get a cup of coffee on the way back. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Thanks people for watching. Bye for now. See you in a couple of days. <laughs>